In this video, we'll see how to blend multiple photos together. First, we'll choose some photos to blend together. Then, we'll put them all together into one document. And then, blend the edges into each other. Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 14 for this video, but you can use other versions as well. I have the four photos that I want to blend together already open in Photoshop Elements. You can see their thumbnails down in the photo bin. In a recent video, I showed how to quickly blend two photos together using the gradient tool. This technique is different because we'll see how to start with a blank document, which you can make any size you want, and then add as many photos as you want to it. And finally, we'll use a different method to blend the edges together. The first thing we'll do is to set up our blank document. To do that, go up to the File menu and choose New Blank File. Or use the keyboard shortcut Command-N on a Mac or Control-N on a PC. The New dialog box will appear. Let's start at the top where there's this field that you can name your new document or you can leave the default name of Untitled. My blended photo is going to be made from some photos we took on a recent trip to Tucson, Arizona. So I'm going to name my document Tucson by typing it in. The next field is named Preset. When you click on that field, a pop-up menu appears. Since I want to make a photo that I can have printed out, I'm going to choose Photo. By choosing Photo, it changed the next field down, which is called Size. When I click on that, I get a pop-up list of some common photo print sizes in both Landscape and Portrait. I'm going to choose Landscape 8x10. But let's say that you want to create a large collage of photos to display at your son or daughter's graduation party, or maybe at an anniversary party. Then you could choose Custom from the preset list, and double-click to type any size that you want in the width and height fields. So you might type 17 by 20. or whatever size you want it to be. But for our example, I'm going to go back to Photo and use Landscape 8x10. And the Width and Height fields gets automatically filled in with those dimensions. The next field down is named Resolution. The default is 300 pixels per inch, which is a good resolution to get a nice quality print made from a photo lab. And it will also be adequate for most home desktop inkjet printers. So I'll leave that at 300. I'll leave the color mode at RGB and the background contents field at white. Now let's click OK to close the dialog box and accept our choices. Our new blank document appears in the active image area. If you don't already have the photos for your collage open up in Elements, go ahead and do that now if you're following along. We want to make sure that the Layers panel is showing over on the right side of our window. So if it's not there, there's a couple ways you can make it show up, but the way I'm going to do it will work for any version of Elements that you might be using. Just go up to the Window menu and click on Layers to make it visible. And you can see it now over on the right hand side. Now we can start placing our photos onto our new blank document that we just created. Make one of the photos active by either clicking on its thumbnail down in the photo bin or by clicking on its tab up at the top of the window. There's different ways to move a photo into another photo. I'm going to use the copy and paste method. First, we need to select the photo. To do that, go up to the Select menu and choose All. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-A on a Mac or Control-A on a PC. Then go to the Edit menu and choose Copy by clicking on it. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-C on a Mac or Control-C on a PC. Now we have that photo copied to our computer's clipboard. 
so we can close it in Photoshop Elements. To do that, just click on this little X um, in the tab right before its name. Now we'll paste the photo that we copied into the blank document by going up to the Edit menu and clicking on Paste. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-V on a Mac or Control-V on a PC. If you look over in the Layers panel, you can see that it pasted that photo in as a new layer. Since that photo is bigger than the blank document that we pasted it into, it completely covered the white in the active image area, and we can't even see the entire photo that we pasted in. So let's size it down. To do that, go up to the Image menu and choose Transform, Free Transform. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-T on a Mac or Control-T on a PC. When you do that, you get the Free Transform bounding box around the photo. There are eight adjustment handles located around the bounding box. They look like tiny squares. There's one on each corner of the bounding box and one at the center of the line on each side. But since our photo that we pasted in is so large, we can't see the whole bounding box or all of the adjustment handles. We can only see three of the eight handles. The trick to be able to see the entire bounding box is to go up to the View menu and choose Fit on Screen. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-0 on a Mac or Control-0 on a PC. When we do that, it reduces the view enough that we can see the entire bounding box and all eight of its handles. To make our photo smaller, I'm going to put my cursor over one of the corner handles and click and drag diagonally in towards the center of the photo. We'll just kind of move it around until you see this diagonal double-headed arrow, and then you can click and continue holding down the mouse button as you drag towards in towards the center of your photo. And just so you know, you can let go of the mouse button, so I'll do that now, and then you could like grab another corner if you wanted to and click and drag. Notice that there's a green check mark and a red no symbol at the bottom of the bounding box. If for some reason you decide that you don't want to resize your photo at this time, you can just click that red no symbol to cancel out a free transform and your photo will return to its original size. While you're in free transform, you can also move your photo around by placing your cursor inside of the bounding box. Notice the cursor turns into an arrowhead and once you see that, it indicates that you can press down the mouse button and drag the photo to a different position. I'll drag it up here in the corner and then release the mouse button. You'll stay in free transform mode until you either cancel out of it by clicking on the red no symbol or by committing to your change by clicking on the green check mark. Even though I'm not completely sure what size I want this photo, I'm going to start here. I know that I have four different photos to place. So I'm going to start by sizing each one a little bigger than one quarter the size of my document just by visually estimating the size. I can always go back into Free Transform and change it if I need to later. For now, I'm going to accept these changes by clicking on the green check mark. And you can see that the bounding box goes away indicating that we're no longer in free transform mode. Now I'll go to my next photo by clicking on it, either on its tab at the top or the thumbnail in the photo bin at the bottom. When I look down at the bottom, I no longer see the photo bin there. It gets replaced when you choose free transform. You can get the photo bin back by clicking on it in the lower left of your window. So right down here it says photo bin. Just click on that and now we see our photos again. And I'll click on this image to make it active. Let's press Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC for select all. Then press Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to copy the photo to our computer's clipboard. 
and now we can close that photo by clicking on the X on its tab at the top. Make sure that your new document is active, and mine is, or you can click on it in the tab to make sure, or by clicking on it down in the photo bin. And then paste the photo that we just copied into it by pressing Command V on a Mac or Control V on a PC. Now we'll go into Free Transform by pressing Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC. Click and drag on the corner handle to resize the photo and position it. And I'll position it down into this corner. And then click the green check mark to remove the free transform bounding box and to accept the changes. Go to the next photo and press Command or Control A for select all. Then press Command or Control C to copy to the clipboard. Then click the X to close that photo. Make sure you're in the new document and press Command or Control V to paste that photo. And then press Command or Control T for free transform. Use the corner handles to make the photo smaller if you need to. And then press the green check mark to accept. Go through those same steps for the rest of the photos that you want to include in your collage. So I just have one more here. So I'll do select all, copy, close that, and then paste it, and get free transform, and then resize it. And I'll reposition it. And then click the green check mark to accept. Now you might want to rename your layers in the Layers panel to help you know which photo is on which layer. Right now they just have the generic names that Photoshop Elements gave them. With my example, I can pretty much tell from the thumbnails what each layer has on it, but if you have a lot of different layers or they all look similar, it might help you identify the contents of each layer by renaming them. To do that, just double click right on the name in the Layers panel. That will highlight the text so you can type in a more descriptive name. This top one is a photo of my wife Linda, so I'll double click on the name of the layer and then I'll just type Linda. This next layer is of um, our friends at the top of Mount Lemon in Tucson, so I'll call it Mount Lemon. Just use whatever name makes sense to you. I'll call this one down here Garden. And this last one I'll name Flowers. Now we're ready to soften the edges and blend the photos into each other. We can do that because each photo is now on its own layer in the Layers panel. I'm going to reposition some of my photos. You might not feel a need to do this, but I want to show you that it's pretty easy to do if you do want to. In our example, I want both of the mountain photos to be at the top. And since the other two photos are mainly plants, I'll have them on the bottom. So if I just switch places with the photos of Linda and the photo of the red flowers, I'll have what I want. To move a layer, first make sure that it's active in the Layers panel by clicking on it. So I'll click on the Linda layer. Next, you need to use the Move tool. So let's go over to the Tools panel and click on the Move tool to make it the active tool. And it's this one right up here. Now, hold down the mouse button and drag over the photo in the direction that you want to move it to. 
I'm not going to move it all the way up to the corner yet because it would cover up my flowers and I want to be able to see them so it'll be easier to move them. I'll just move Linda near the center and then release the mouse button. Now let's click on the flower layer to make it active and then drag that down to the lower left corner. and it kind of snaps in place there. And then I'll um, click on the Linda layer again and move that to the um, upper right corner. In addition to moving each photo around within the document, we can also change what's called the stacking order of the layers. That refers to which layers are above other layers in the Layers panel, which translates to which photos are in front or behind other photos in the active image area. In our example, if we look at the layers panel, we see that the Linda layer is the top layer, and it's in front of any other photo in the active image area. And if we look at the photo on the layer at the bottom of the layers panel, not including the white background layer, we see that it's the flower layer. And in the active image area, the flower photo is behind any other photo that it overlaps with. You can change the stacking order of the layers by holding down the mouse button as you drag the layers up or down in the layers panel. If I click and drag the flower layer up, see how that horizontal line just got kind of darker? As soon as you see that, you can release the mouse button. It will move that layer to that new position. So now you can see the red flowers are no longer at the bottom. They're second from the bottom. I'm going to drag it back down to the bottom. I want to add this mountain lemon photo at the top of my stacking order. So I'll drag it up to the top. Now we can start blending the ed edges of the photos together. I like to start with the photo that's at the top of the layers panel because it's in front of all of the other photos as we discussed a little earlier. And we're going to use layer masks to do our blending. If you're unfamiliar with layer masks and you want an explanation of how they work, you can use the search box on my website, EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. To find some tutorials I've done on layer masks, just type layer mask into the search box and then click search. Look for the one titled Layer Masks Clearly Explained. Let's add a layer mask to that top layer, the one I named Mount Lemon. To do that, make sure that it's the active layer by clicking on it in the Layers panel. I can tell that it's already the active layer because it's highlighted in blue, but if it's not, just click on it. Next, click on that little icon in the Layers panel that looks like a circle inside of a square. That's the Add Layer Mask icon can see the Mount Lemon layer now has a layer mask thumbnail next to the regular thumbnail. A layer mask allows us to hide parts of the layer that it's on by adding black to it. For this technique, we're going to add black by painting it on the layer mask with the brush tool. So let's go over to the Tools panel and click on the brush tool to make it active. It's the first tool in the Draw section. The Brush tool shares that space with two other tools. You might see one of those in that space instead, but regardless of which tool you see there, go ahead and click on it. And then, if you need to, go down to the Tool Options and click on the regular Brush tool down there to make it active. My Brush tool was active, but if the Impressionist Brush is the one you see in the Draw section, you could click on it there and then go down to the Tool Options and click on the regular Brush Tool to make it active. Also, from the Tool Options, we want to choose a soft-edged round brush to paint with. To do that, click on the Brush Preview. I'll usually choose the Basic Brush set from up here. So right now it's on Default Brushes. These are different sets, and there's one near the top, and it's called Basic Brushes. You can use the um, scroll bar on the right to hold down your mouse button and you can click down to go through all the different brushes in that set. The ones that you see right now are all hard-edged brushes, but once we get down here, you can see that the, the brush look a little blurry. 
And those are soft edged and they're all the same. They're just different sizes. That's what these numbers indicate. Just double click to choose one of these soft edged brushes. So now move the cursor into the active image area. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Our brush is represented by this little circle. The size of the circle indicates the size of our brush tip. We can use the left and right bracket keys on our keyboard to resize the brush. They're the keys that are located right next to the letter P on most keyboards. Every time you press the right bracket key, the brush gets larger, and every time you press the left bracket key, it gets smaller. So I'll size the brush to this kind of medium-sized brush by pressing the right bracket key a few times. Something like that, maybe. Let's look at the Layers panel again. Since we added that layer mask to our top layer, we now have those two thumbnails for that layer in the Layers panel. The one on the left represents our regular layer image, and the thumbnail on the right represents the layer mask. Make sure that the layer mask is active by clicking on its thumbnail. You can tell that it's active because it has this light blue border around it, but if I double click on the regular thumbnail, that has the light blue border around it to indicate that now it's active. We don't want to paint on the regular layer, we want to paint on the layer mask, so make sure it's active by clicking on it. Earlier I mentioned that we want to paint with black. The brush tool uses whatever color the foreground color is. The foreground color is this top overlapping square, and the square that's right behind it is called the background color. The foreground color will be either black or white. We want it to be black, so if it's white, just click on this little curved arrow right next to those squares. And that will switch the foreground and background colors. Finally, we're all set up to start blending our photos together. You can soften all four edges of your photos if you want, but for this tutorial, I'm going to keep the edges around the outside of the document as they are. Remember, we're working on this photo that's located in the upper left. The bigger your brush tip is, the more gradual your blending will be. So I'm going to make my brush a little bigger by pressing the right bracket key a couple more times. And now we can position our cursor right in the middle of those two edges. So right here. Now hold down the mouse button. In addition to holding down the mouse button, I'm also going to press and hold the shift key and that will keep my line straight drag straight down till I get to the bottom of those two photos and then I'll release both the mouse button and the shift key and it gives us a nice blend between those two photos next let's blend the bottom edge of that same photo so I'll place my cursor between the bottom edge of that photo and the photo below it Actually, that photo below it, see there's a gap in between the two? I'm going to see if I can move that up. So I'll get the Move tool, and then make it the active layer in the Layers panel. And, nope, there's no more room to move it up. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by taking this uh, corner handle and click and drag. So there's some overlap between those two. And then I'll click on the green check mark to OK that. I'll go back to the brush tool, and now we can place our cursor there. I'll hold down the mouse button and hold down the shift key and drag along those two edges, and nothing happens. Well, something did happen. It made a black mark on my red flowers, so I'm going to undo that. The reason it did that, if we look at the layers panel, you can see that the flowers layer is still active from when I resized it because it has the blue highlight around it. I need to click on my layer mask on the top layer again to make that active. I'll place my cursor there again, hold down my mouse button, hold down the shift key, and drag along that edge. Now we got a nice blend at the bottom here, but over by the red flowers it doesn't look so good. It we wanted to get a nice blend between the flowers and the Mount Lemon photo. We can actually see a hard edge that's the top edge of the flowers photo. 
To help us figure out what's going on there, I'm going to switch back to the Move tool by clicking on it in the Tools panel. To see what I want to show you, we need to go down to the Tool Options and make sure that the first three boxes are checked. And you can see mine are, but if yours aren't, just click on them to put a check mark in all three of those boxes. Because we have the box check that's labeled Show Highlight on Rollover, we can hover our mouse over any of the photos in our document and we'll see a highlighted border. And that shows us exactly where the edges of our photo are. Even though we can't see all those edges, we can't see them because they're sometimes covered up by other photos. For example, if I place my cursor over the photo of Linda, you can see the left edge of that photo extends quite a ways over from what we actually see but it's being covered up by the Mount Lemon photo, which is above it in the Layers panel. Now I'll place my cursor over the Red Flowers photo. You can see the top of the flower photo just barely overlaps the Mount Lemon photo. And when I hover my cursor over the Mount Lemon photo, we don't get the blue highlight border. That's because that's our active layer in the Layers panel but we do have a faint dotted line to show us its actual edges, even though some of those edges are being hidden by the black areas of its layer mass. That dotted line is showing because down in the tool options, we have the box check that's labeled Show Bounding Box. The bounding box acts a lot like the Free Transform box. Like the Free Transform box, it has eight handles, and we can hold down the mouse button and drag diagonally on any of the four handles located in the corners to proportionally resize the photo. So back to our problem with our blending not working on the bottom of the Mount Lemon photo, I'm going to undo that last move which was to brush along the bottom of the Mount Lemon photo. The reason we could still see the top edge of the flowers photo is because we used too big of a brush tip for how little overlap we had between those two photos. We have a couple of different options to correct the problem. One option is to use a smaller brush because the smaller the brush, the less amount of area gets blended. The second option is to enlarge one of the photos because that will give us more overlap. Let's make the brush tool active again by clicking on it in the tools panel we can make our brush smaller by pressing the left bracket key a few times. And I'm going to go down to something like this size. I'll place the cursor at the left bottom of the photo. First of all, we've got to make sure that we have the right image and the layer mask selected in the Layers panel, so I'll click on, on that. And then place my cursor over here. I'm going to hold down the mouse button and the shift key again. The results just still are not good. We, it looks like too hard of an edge because I had to use such a small brush to try to blend that. So we're going to have to go to our next option, which is to enlarge one of those two photos, either the flowers or the Mount Lemon photo. First of all, I'm going to undo that brushing we just did by pressing Command or Control Z. I'm going to get the Move tool and I'm going to make the Mount Lemon photo uh, bigger. So I'll click on it. I get my bounding box and then I can go down to this corner and click and drag. And that should be good. So I'll click on the green check mark. So all I did was enlarge the Mount Lemon photo. Now I'll make my layer mask active again in the layers panel and get the brush tool back. And I'm going to make my brush a little bigger and then I'll click and hold down the shift key and drag along that. And that gives us a much better result. Now let's focus on the photo of Linda. We'll start by clicking on that layer in the layers panel to make it active. Next, we'll click on the Add Layer Mask icon to put a layer mask in that layer. And the left edge is already blended, so all we need to do is brush along the bottom edge. 
Let's place our cursor over the right side of the bottom edge, right here. And then I'll just click, hold the shift key and drag along that edge. And that looks good. Let's move to the next layer, which has the garden photo. First click on the layer to make it active. Then go up and add a mask. And the top of that photo is already blended, so let's move to the left edge with our cursor. Hold down the mouse button and the shift key. Drag along that edge. I want to get a little more of those flowers and less of the garden image, so I can do that just by making my cursor a little bigger. Press the right bracket key a few times. And then I'm going to go over that edge one more time. Hold down the mouse button, hold down the shift key. And maybe we'll even go over it one more time. Yeah, I like that better. Now notice we have kind of a little hard edge right here still. And I think what happened when we were on the Linda layer, I did not bring my my black line on my layer mask over far enough to get the rest of those flowers. So let's just see if we can make that better. There we go. Sometimes if you see a hard edge, you have to kind of look in your layers panel and you can just kind of figure out which one you need to touch up a little bit. You'll find you'll probably do a lot of that when you're blending images. You might end up, you know, like we did here, having to enlarge or going over the edge a couple of different times. To sum up the steps, it's pretty easy. First, we created a new blank document, and we made it the size that we wanted, in this case, 8 by 10. Then we copied and pasted the photos that we wanted into the new document. Then starting with the layer at the top of the stacking order, we added a layer mask then we used the brush tool with a soft edge and the foreground color set to black to paint over the edges. It's a pretty quick process once you know the steps. Go ahead and grab some of your own photos and give this a try. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.